This is Twit. Lots of news about a, a Mac, but one of the things that kind of intrigued me, and I, we might start off with something a little bit more speculative. You uh, actually, Renee Ritchie, uh, talked about it uh, on imore.com regarding ARM based Macs. Um, yes. One of the things that happened, uh, Jean-Louis Gasset on Monday wrote a piece uh, in which he actually is quoting, uh, mostly quoting somebody else, uh, a young guy. <laughs> when he wrote the uh, original piece in 2011, three years ago, he was 16. Matt Richmond in his blog post, Apple and Arm Sitting in a Tree. Um, so this was three years ago. But now with the release of the new uh, K1 chip from NVIDIA, the new Tegra K1, a 64-bit chip that is faster than many desktop processors, it makes me wonder if there isn't something to this. Uh, what do you think of all of this? I mean, it's pure speculation, as you point out. It's So Apple is not a dumb company, and if there's anything that any of us could think that Apple sh might be interested in, chances are that they have prototyped it, they have it in testing, they have it in development. We know they had uh, the Marklar, the Intel-based Max running for a long time before they switched to Intel running in the labs. We know that Apple has had interns porting things like OS 10 to ARM, the OS 10 kernel to ARM. Uh, the rumor has it they have ARM based Macs, some running iOS, some with touchscreens, all of that in the lab. But that's a far cry from a shipping product. Uh, the switch to Intel happened because they could get better power efficiency. And they could, it was a whole bunch of advantages that came to switching to Intel, including PC compatibility. They could run um, boot camp. They could run emulators. Switching to uh, ARM, I think a lot of people, a lot of lay observers are excited because of the idea of Apple owning the whole stack, where they see the A7 chip and how powerful it is, and they start to dream of, of uh, ARM-based Macs. But for Apple to do this, they would have to have as compelling a reason. It would have to be as beneficial to them to undergo the pain of the transfer of having to figure out, are they going to run iOS? Will they get OS X onto an ARM chip? Would everyone who makes OS X apps have to port them to an ARM chip? Would they emulate existing x86 apps? How would they handle Windows for people who still need Windows and Enterprise? Would there be a boot camp? There are so many questions and so much pain involved that um, I think this stuff is absolutely in the realm of speculation and maybe a little bit of fan fiction at the moment. Yeah. 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 On the other, you see some benefits, but you ha you're right to underscore the trials that would go along. Apple did it so well with Intel that maybe people forget that. I mean, uh, Rosetta and Carbon were done so beautifully that I think a lot of people didn't feel much pain making the transition development. I mean, they have those, they, also, they have those things. It's just a question of those becoming shipping products yeah. and the decision to make those shipping products. Apple, when Apple says things like uh, people don't like, uh, touchscreen Macs aren't a good idea. They're not ergonomic. It's not because they're pulling out of their hat. It's because they made touchscreen Macs yeah. and they tested them significantly and that was determination. And as far as I know, the ARM Macs, they dangle those over Intel and say, how late is Broadwell going to be again? And it's really effective for that, but it's probably not effective for yeah. stuffing store shelves yet. And as Renee says, I mean, when they did the transition to Intel, you you forget that PowerPC was not dead, but oh boy, the trajectory of that CPU was going way, way down. Apple was really, it was as I recall, Apple was the only main uh, uh, main client for that CPU that wasn't like embedded systems and controller systems. Whereas if they switch to Intel, so long as, as Microsoft Windows continues to run at Intel machines, Intel was going to continue to make hot, 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 processors next generation generation after that generation after that so there was nothing but upside uh, to sw switching to intel like, given that given that the the hassles to developers is not something that apple is going to care about 19 in, in the, back then uh, so if they were to switch to arm it would have to be something so compelling such as their ability to really tailor make uh, a cpu to a specific model which they so could do they were, I mean, that's... Which they could do. I mean, if, if if one thing that would be possible if they were to, to adopt this is to simply say that from now on, the the CPU, the official CPU of the MacBook Air is going to be ARM. The official CPU of the MacBook Pro and the desktop line is going to be Intel because if people do want that higher performance, if people do want compatibility with Windows, it's there. But for the purposes of producing a $1,000 but and now $900 and then in the future $800 ultralight notebook that gets not just 10 hours, not just 12 hours, but now 17 or 18 hours of battery life and can do all kinds of extra tricks that they haven't even thought of yet because they they can simply design an ARM chip to do exactly what they needed to do for this product. That would be an upside, but it's it's not as simple as simply you know putting a new sticker on a, on a different box. People might forget that it was Apple that's founded ARM back in 1990. Yeah. 
Uh, it, uh, ARM originally stood for Acorn Risk Machine. Acorn Computers, which is a popular uh, computer in the UK, uh, was a risk processor, which stands for Reduced Instruction Set. Uh, Intel processors and, and all the main processors, including the PowerPC, although less so the PowerPC. I guess maybe PowerPC might have been a I think risk it was processor. Risk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. were CISC, complex instruction sets. In other words, the basic instruction set, the basic fundamental capabilities of the processor on Intel chips, there are many more base instructions. The instruction set is much larger than on ARM. It's a reduced instruction set, and the idea being uh, that you can reduce complexity, and the chip, that's one of the reasons the chip is lower power, uh, is, uh, you know, it's, it's a simple chip. X86 is a mess. Yeah, x86 because of its need to support legacy. In fact, even yeah. Intel wanted to get away from x86, uh, attempted to, and was uh, pushed back uh, because of the, they needed to support legacy hardware. John Syracuse had a really uh, good an uh, analysis of this. And one of the things he brought into, he reminded us all is that, you know, ARM is going up in performance, but Intel is going down in power. Haswell right. is very good. Broadwell is going to be very good. But also, you know, Apple can design any chip they want, but who's going to fab it? Right now, Intel is the only one who could fab 14 nanometer. And it'd be hard for Apple to say, you've got to fab our A8, A9, A10, whatever chip before you do Bradwell, or before you do Broadwell, or before you do Skylake, or before you do whatever is next from that. So designing the chip is only one part of it. Right. Getting it fabbed is a second part, and currently that's still mostly an Intel game. ARM is a what they call a fabless company. They don't make chips. They design chips and license them to other people, including mm -hmm. uh, Samsung, who makes the chips, currently makes the chips for the iPad and the iPhone. Um, Qualcomm, which makes uh, very powerful ARM chips. Uh, NVIDIA. Um, it's, kind of an interesting, it's kind of an interesting question, though, because keep in mind that they're already fabbing uh, ARM chips by the tens of millions to be to put into iOS devices. Right. So there's certainly capacity there. But once again, it's not something they would do just to say that they would do it. It's also if you if you uh, if you are harping on certain negative uh, popular aspects of, uh, of Apple, they, it's not something they would do just to simply say we don't want to be beholden to Intel anymore. They're perfectly fine with being beholden to Intel so long as it's helping them pr to make the devices that they want to make. So when they when it turns out when it turns out that they can no longer make the devices they want to make, and the limitation is the Intel is Intel, that's when you'll start seeing a lot of serious serious velocity on these rumors. Yeah.